And now I look to David Silverman to continue the case for the opposition. Good evening, everybody. I said good evening, everybody. My name is David Silverman, and I am pleased to be here tonight. Uh, thank you for coming. I'd like to start out by uh, saying, Ms. Ridley, if you'd like to meet a few hundred or thousand atheist military veterans, I can gladly introduce you. Um, I am a loud and proud firebrand atheist, and by the way, you should be too. Uh, <laughs> uh, today we are discussing one of the most defe dis defeated and discredited ideas in the world that it takes religion for a country to thrive. The House believes that religion is necessary for a country to thrive, and I am here today not just to give some perspective on why that isn't and simply cannot be the case, but also to give some real solid proof that the House proposal is wrong. Religion is defined, as Charlie mentioned, as a set of beliefs around a god or gods. Gods are, by definition, supernatural living entities. Some people like to stretch the truth by stretching the definitions of these words. God becomes love, or all of us, or nature, just so the speaker can claim to be a believer or confuse the listeners. But words have meanings, and pretending the word God means something different does not make you a believer, and it does not make your God real. No, ladies and gentlemen. Where are you? Here. Hello. <laughs> I, I thank you so much. So the word religion has multiple meanings. And the meaning that you're talking about, where anybody can be a part of a religion, uh, is so broad that it's something that can be just followed fervently that football can be considered a religion. And thumb twiddling can be considered a religion. And so for the sake of this argument, I'm using the, real, the word that everybody uses that in a common definition. I'm not redefining it. However, I am limiting it to taking out that, that awful definition where thumb twiddling can be a religion. And so what I'm using is religion is around, the practice around a god or gods. And a god is not love or an emotion. A god is a living supernatural entity. Thank you. So, Ladies and gentlemen, religions and gods are all about, like I said, the supernatural. And that means outside the bounds of the laws of physics and mathematics which govern the universe. And places gods in the same category as magic, psychics, ghosts, goblins, boogeymen, and all the other gods, all of which we all agree are false. And false, ladies and gentlemen, is the operative word for which I begin my argument across all religions, across all time, and across the whole planet. The sum total of valid evidence for anything supernatural ever is zero. God, Allah, Yahweh, psychics, ghosts, and Superman, wait, God, Allah, let me get this point, I'll get to you. God, Allah, Yahweh, psychics, ghosts, and Superman, all have zero scientifically valid evidence to support their assertions that they exist and that should therefore be considered equally false by society. All religion, by far, is by bar none rather, is fiction. Yes? Isn't the sum total of evidence to conclusively disprove the existence of God also zero and therefore by extension you at best demonstrate there's no conclusive evidence to prove that God exists as opposed to showing that you assert that God is false. These so, are two very different statements. They are very different statements. Thank you very much. <laughs> Atheism is not the definition of conclusively saying that there are no gods. Just like I cannot prove there are no unicorns, just like I cannot prove Santa Claus isn't really good at hiding. <laughs> okay? You can't prove any gods don't exist. You can't prove Superman doesn't exist. But that doesn't make it valid. What makes it valid is whether or not it supports the laws of physics and mathematics as we know them and has any evidence to support it. Otherwise, you place God and unicorns 
and Santa Claus in the same category. And yes, I cannot conclusively prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that Santa Claus isn't real, but, we don't intelli but intelligent people, we don't actually consider that to be real. We put religion in a different place. And I'm telling you, my assertion is that we put religion in a different place from all those things for one reason and one reason only, because religion says so, like Douglas Adams said. This is why religious people, while they might debate the tenets and traditions of their religion over another, will never actually venture into debating why their religion is right and the others are wrong. Never happens. Deep down, they all know there is no more proof for their religion than those beliefs they dismiss as evil or otherwise wrong. Every religious person is not religious because of proof, but because of indoctrination and brainwashing. Their gods are simply mirror images of themselves, believing what the believer believes, by design, on every moral issue. This leads to a sensitivity, which leads to an intolerance and indeed a hatred of other religions, because this debate triggers doubts and the internal conflicts about the validity of their own convictions. And this makes religion the single most divisive topic on the planet. Nobody wants to admit that their religion is all fluff. And everyone wants to believe that their God is real and agrees with them and that they are right and that their land is theirs granted by God and that their way is the way that everyone else should live. Case in point, yes. Um, so you're espousing these very like, rigid definitions and very rigid sort of ideas. Yes. Um, I'm in, not in, all right, very good question. And you hit on a very important topic that I want to touch on, because atheists are not intolerant to religious people. I do not have any intolerance to religious people. I have a lot of intolerance to all religion, because all religion is a lie and a con and a scam, and it deserves to die. <laughs> and unlike religious people, if anyone, anywhere, at any time can prove me wrong once, I will quit my job. Now I'll make it very clear, any miracle, any god, any psychic, any ghost, anywhere, any time, once, let me test it, any time, once. Ghost Hunters has been on the air in America for 11 seasons, <laughs> all right? And they have spin-offs all over the country. And if any ghost hunter show or any psychic show anywhere, anytime can show me anything wrong once, I'll quit my job. I'm not afraid because it is all a lie, it is all a scam, and it is all a con, and it is why, it is because of my respect for my fellow human being, it is because of my love for my fellow human being that I hate religion and I want it destroyed. It's not about the people, it's about the idea. Yes. Uh, assuming the argument that it's false, and even if that is the case, you couldn't have said it would be a useful lie. And I'll get to that. Thank you so much. Okay, so case in point. I was talking about how people should want, people want their gods to give them their lands, to give them their lives, to make everybody act as they should be. So my case in point now goes to Ms. Ridley again. She is a Muslim and a victim of brainwashing, as all believers are. Yes, it is the right thing. It is the right thing and the humanistic thing to speak the truth. Are you kidding? <laughs> We're going to get a lot of bells tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And she has said many things which anger the member of Islam's favorite bad guys, the Jews, but neither she nor any Muslim nor any Jew can describe why their God is more valid than Zeus or more real than Superman, because they are not. As I've mentioned in my book, Fighting God, all religions are lies, all believers are victims. Believers, even those who preach hatred and violence, deserve to be treated with compassion and sympathy because they are the only victims, only the victims of the largest lie ever told. Even when they throw hate, believers should be met with kindness mixed with brutal honesty so they can hear the truth and consider the validity or lack thereof of their dogma perhaps for the first time. 
It is a good moral and humanistic thing to protect the believer by destroying the belief. So, if religion is all a lie, and it is by definition, the question of the house then becomes, are lies necessary to create a thriving society? Is it a requirement to mislead in order to lead? Long ago, leadership lied and used gods to legitimize itself. Royalty was descended by gods. Leaders were appointed by gods. Prophets were chosen by gods. And wars, as well as sporting events, were all won because gods were on their side. And so this planet has a long tradition of using gods to quell uprising. All the, well, all the while, religion and its preachers flourished under the force of law, which protected and promoted the lie of God. So, of course, religion preaches that religion is necessary for thriving because it is the primary beneficiary of this mentality. The politicians in the religion's pockets all agree because it keeps the people in line, legitimizes the leaders, and quiets the masses. The question is, is all that lying really necessary to have a society today? Oh boy, we're going long. <laughs> so let's look at some data. I'm sorry, we're going long. Uh, and I hope you all do because there is a wealth of data to support me. And I'm going to skip some of it. <laughs> <laughs> For instance, the University of Arizona and Washington State University studied quality of life and then rated the planet's country, the planets, countries in order, and when those are plotted against the God belief of those countries, a clear correlation was found that the countries in which religion was less important had a higher quality of life. The summary shows, quote, the least religious countries are more democratic, more peaceful, have less corruption, more telephones, do better at science, have less inequality and other problems, and in other words, are less dysfunctional, end quote. In other words, quality, quantitative data shows countries thriving without religion, proving the house question wrong. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm running out of time, so let me just go on. How do you prove correlation or correlation? I am talking about correlation, scientifically valid correlation. It's a perfectly good question, and everything that I'm talking about is quantitative data with a high correlation. You, yes, you can stand on your head and say correlation does not equal causation, but correlation is real and it's scientifically valid and you should use it. <laughs> so, let's put the data down. But let's put the data down. And look at the USA for a moment and look at how Trump's religion is, is affecting us. Trump's new immigration policy is clearly based on his ties to Christianity and aimed at their favorite bad guy, the Muslims. The fa same goes for the country's allegiance to Israel. The laws in America, which caused so much internal strife, including the supposed right to discriminate against gay people and prohibitions against abortion and physician-assisted suicide, are all limiting our ability to, to thrive and are all based on religion. So, let me skip ahead and summarize with a small picture and a big picture. The small picture is that, no, the house is wrong. Societies can live quite well without religion and are doing so right now and in fact are doing better than religious countries. And this is, pr and this is proven not by one or two sources of data, but by nearly all the data. I can show you country after country where less religion correlates with more thriving and more religion correlates with, with and causes fewer rights and lower quality of life. But the big picture is bigger than that. Religion is a set of lies based on lies that creates intolerance by its very existence. It dehumanizes members of outgroups, including apostates and not adherents, making it so easy to hate, abuse, or even kill. It fosters bigotry en masse, as seen so often from zealots, and all religions do this, ladies and gentlemen. The more power religion has, the more they dehumanize outsiders, even if we are simply talking about the wrong sect. I know. <laughs> when religion mixes with politics, there can be no religious freedom, no freedom of expression or doubt, and no progress. This is why religion can never give us peace, can never cause a country to prosper, and will always and forever be an impediment to thriving. Thank you.